All right, so today we're going to do lesson 29-1, construct a function. So we're going to talk about how to make our own function based off of some information, and then we're also going to graph that function. All right, so today we're going to talk about wind turbines. So there's a picture of the wind turbines um, down below. Um, so basically what happens is wind turbines spin with the wind, and it produces energy. Um, a lot of farms use it. Schools are actually starting to use it because it's a cheaper way um, than just paying like we do to ComEd or some energy company. All right, so specifically we're going to talk about Buffalo Mountain. They have three old turbines that are 213 feet tall and have blades that are 75 inches in length. Um, each of these older turbines generates 660 uh, uh, kilowatts of power. So power is me measured in kilowatts um, and it's per hour. So that's super important when we start to do some of these problems. And then it says they have some newer turbines that are 260 feet tall with blades that are 135 feet long. Um, but those are a lot newer. They create 1,800 kilowatts of power each hour. So the first one um, tells us to focus on the new turbine. So we're looking at that second paragraph. And it says, how much do they generate in a day? Um, well, we know there's 24 hours in a day. So all we have to do is take those 1,800 kilowatts per hour and then multiply by 24. So it's 43,200 kilowatts. Okay, I did a bunch of the calculations ahead of time. Uh, so that we don't have to keep going to a calculator like we would if we were in class. All right, so then the next one says, oops, um, write a function that represents the amount of uh, energy by a newer turbine each hour. So we know that it's 1,800 kilowatts per hour. Um, it does tell us to use X for number of hours, and it asks us to define our, to define our variable. So X is the number of hours. And then we'll let y equal the number of kilowatts. Again, kW for kilowatts. So we know each one, so the number of kilowatts is going to be 1,800. And it's 1,800 kilowatts per hour. So we're just going to multiply that by x. Um, question 3 says, is this directly proportional? So again, remember that directly proportional, if we're looking at this equation, y equals 1,800x, um, directly proportional has to have a y-intercept of 0, 0 and it has to be a line, okay? Um, sometimes they say it's in the form y equals k times x, which this one is. Our k value is represented by that 1800, um, or we could just look and there's a plus zero at the end. So yes, um, it's directly proportional. All right, so the next one says, unfortunately, wind turbines don't produce um, or only produce top capacity at a small range of wind speeds. So it says that um, they produce about 40% of the power that they should. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that number from example one. We said in one day it creates 43,200. We know that 40% is the same as 0.40. If you remember from what we've done before, you just move that decimal point back two spots. So we're going to multiply that by 0.40, and that gives us 17,280 kilowatts. Um, but that's in 24 hours, so that's in a full day. So what they want us to do is they want us to go ahead and rewrite our function um, based off of, um, so back in number two, that was per hour. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, it's going to make not 1,800. We're going to have to take that 1,800 and multiply by 0.40 which gives us 720, so it makes 720 kilowatts per hour. So again, we know it's going to be less than half. Half of that 1,800 would be about 900. 40% is 720. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that equation um, to figure out how much energy or how much power would be created in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, etc. So the one thing we've got to be careful is that 720x, remember x represents um, the number of hours. So we got to be careful because now this is talking about how many days. So we know that um, for 30 days, we would have to take 720. And we know there's 24 hours in a day, but then we'd also have to multiply by 30 because there's 30 days. That number is 518,400. So these numbers are going to be pretty big. So the next thing we have to do is we got to do 60. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take 724 or 720 times 24, but this time times 60, um, and that's going to be 1,036,800. So again, these numbers are getting pretty big pretty fast. So 90 days, we're going to do the same thing. 
We're going to say 724 times 20, 720 times 24 times 90, and that gives us 1,555,200. If we keep going, do the same thing, but instead of 90 multiplied by 120, we get 2,073,600. If we multiply by 180 instead of 120, we get 3,110,400. And then the last one, 365 days or a year, you get 6,307,200. So those numbers get pretty big, pretty fast. Um, and again, we had to multiply by that 24 because each of those is hours and there's 24 hours in each. All right, so if you go to the next page, I actually copied those numbers down ahead of time. Now, I didn't do the full numbers because we're going to have to graph these, and I'm not going to be able to graph exactly um, uh, those values, but we're going to take a look and try to graph them as accurately as possible. So the first one is 30, comma, um, 518,000. So the problem here is if you look at our scale, if I'm counting to 60, this has to be 20 and this has to be 40. So 30 is going to be somewhere right in the middle. So I have to go over 30 and then up 518,000, which is about half. So somewhere about right there. Now I'm going to go over 60 and up just over 1 million. So that's going to be about right there. 90 would be in the middle of 60 and 120. And that's going to go up about 1.5. Five, which would be somewhere in the middle there. Um, 120 is up just over 2 million. 180 is at 3 million. And then way over at 365, it's going to be way up here somewhere at a little over 6 million. So those points may be not perfect, but they do look like they form a line, and they should. Uh, we can actually connect this line because we could just do one day, two days, three days. So like we talked about before with discontinuous, there are a bunch of points here and a bunch of points there. So we can go ahead and we can connect that line. Um, and that's actually going to help us answer a question in a second. Um, before we do that, it asks us about domain and range. So domain and range are words that we've talked about before. Um, they should also be on your word wall. Domain is your X values and range is your Y values. Okay, so our x values were time. Well, we know time can't be negative. That doesn't make sense. But we could have done this for zero days. So our domain has to be numbers that are greater than or equal to zero. Range is our kilowatts. Well, we can't produce negative power. So our kilowatts also have to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, a few seconds ago, I just talked about the fact that this is a continuous function. And remember, it's continuous because we could do one day, two days, three days, um, a half a day, a quarter of a day, etc. Um, time is something that goes on forever, unlike your shoe size, a half size, you know, you could wear a seven, a seven and a half, there is no 7.1, 7.2, etc. That would be considered discrete. All right, so the next one says, how would you find, or how would you use this equation to find the power generated by all 18 turbines? Well, if we know how much generates by one turbine, all we would have to do is we would have to multiply um, by 18. So we're going to take that equation y equals 720x, and we're going to multiply it by 18. So now it's y equals 12,960x. So that's how much it would be for all 18 turbines if that's what they had. Okay, so going to the next question, it says, okay, how much energy is created by the three older turbines? So if you go back to the page before each, or the first page, each turbine produced 660 kilowatts per hour. So that was each machine, not all three. Okay, so if we go off to the side here for 9A, we're going to have to take that 660 kilowatts. We're going to have to multiply it by 3, and then remember that that's per hour. So our equation is going to be Y equals 1980X. Okay, so part B says um, to create the table just like we did for part A. Okay, so that is something that I'm going to actually have you guys do for homework. But the one thing I want you to remember is that this is in hours. So to do 30, you're going to have to do Y equals 1980 times 24 for hours times 30 for days. And that's the number that would go there. So part of your homework is going to be to finish number nine. 
Um, so I want you to fill in the table. Um, I would definitely recommend doing the table down off to the side because you are not going to fit those huge numbers in those little boxes. Um, so maybe just, you know, go 30, 60, 90, all the way down to 365 off to the side. Um, and then sketch a graph. So remember, your graphs are not going to be perfect. You're just kind of approximating if it's, you know, 5,400,000, you know, just go a little bit above five, maybe a little bit below five and a half. All right, we're going to skip numbers nine and 11. Okay, we're also going to skip numbers uh, 12 and 13. So your homework is going to be to finish number nine. Okay, and then also to do... 14 through 19 right off to the side here. Okay, so some of you did not do the homework from last or from um, Tuesday, so you do have the ability to go back and do that. Uh, some of you did the homework, but you skipped a bunch because maybe you had questions. So I responded to those questions on Schoology. So please take a look at those. Um, and I did ask uh, a handful of you to resubmit it 